tonight uh, for your, the church, the service. I pray that you would bless it and please be with me, lead me, guide me through the word of God tonight that I could bring forth a blessing for your people. And Lord, I, I thank you for uh, the ones who have come out tonight, for the ones who are listening on Zoom and on the phone. Bless them. Continue to bless our church. Lord, as we uh, change presidents, President Biden inaugurated today, Lord, I pray that you would you just um, lead, lead him and help him, Lord, to lead us uh, back to the paths of righteousness, Lord. And I pray that uh, you just uh, get a hold of our leaders. Lord, help them to lead in a righteous manner, in a just manner, uh, in equity, Lord, and, and keep us free. Pray that we continue to be able to have services and be able to meet like this, Lord. And we thank you for the freedom as Americans, and we thank you for freedom from sin and freedom through Jesus Christ, uh, through salvation. Thank you for that. And thank you for dying for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, I want you to turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Uh, I've been preaching the last couple of weeks on uh, the present state of the nation and going through some of the reasons why we're where we are today. And I guess in thinking about the nation, uh, it makes you sad to think that this, this country is, is starting to uh, turn in directions that we as Christians and as the Word of God would not have us to go. It's troubling. And I guess that's the biggest word tonight. And that's the one word that hit me as I was studying yesterday, the word troubling, troubled. There are a lot of people who are troubled. A lot of people are troubled about where are we going. A lot of people are troubled about what's going to happen to our children. A lot of people are troubled with all the violence that they've seen in the streets and the violence that they've seen all over the place. Say, so this is an America. This is not the America I know. They're troubled. They're troubled by many, many things. Now, I want to begin by saying to be troubled is to be human. Okay? So if you're troubled or if you've experienced any of this trouble in your heart, it's natural to be troubled at things. Now, I'm going to say this too. Christ Jesus himself was troubled. Okay? So if you think about who he was, he was troubled over some things. And in fact, it's through him being troubled that he was able to comfort. Okay? And you say, oh man, Jesus was troubled? I wouldn't expect Jesus to be troubled. You know, when you're troubled, it's like you're bothered by something. You're, you're upset. You're a little concerned, troubled. Okay? So tonight, I want you to go to one of the greatest verses in the Bible in John chapter 14. John 14 And the scripture tells us in verse number one, let not your heart be troubled. Okay, that's what it says. Who's experienced a troubled heart over the past month? Anybody? Troubled. Well, what does Jesus say? What did he say? Let not your heart be troubled. You say, Pastor, okay, but I'm interested in knowing what was he troubled with? If he said, don't let your heart be troubled, then why was he troubled? Okay? I'm going to explain, and I will explain it. Okay? So you understand. This is the beauty of our Savior. Okay? I want you to understand that when you believe on Christ as your Savior, you're believing on a Savior who understands what you're going through. Okay? And I'll explain that. Let's turn to John chapter 11. John 11, I'm going to go through three times that Jesus was troubled just before this, before he said it. And if you look at where he was troubled, these chapters are just kind of before chapter 14. We're going to look in chapter 11, John chapter 11. <clears throat> John 11, and look in verse number 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord... If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was what? 
troubled. Now, wasn't that the same one who said, let not your heart be troubled? What was he? He was troubled. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Now, if you know your Bible at all, and I've asked before for many people to give me a verse of scripture from the Bible. And usually it's the young ones who throw their hand up in the air and say, Jesus wept. Well, you know that verse. Well, it's because it's right there. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. But how powerful is the verse? Jesus wept. Now, some look into this and say, well, why did he weep? For one, the verse before, just two before, said he was troubled. He was troubled, obviously, at what was happening around him. Now, you say, well, was he troubled at the death of Lazarus? I don't know if that's what was involved. Or was he troubled at Mary mourning and grieving and Martha and all that was leading up to this, was he troubled by that? Or did he see more in the death of Lazarus? Was he troubled about something that was going to happen pretty soon to him? And I tend to believe that right there was the reason he was troubled. Was because at this happening, he began to see that he wouldn't be on earth very much longer. And the death of Lazarus was indicative of what he also would go through. And when he got here and he saw all of this emotion, it caught up to him. And he wept. And he wept. Now, some can say, well, you're reading into that a bit. But why did he cry? Why did he weep? He was troubled inside. Now, I've seen people come to tears. You know, this... All that's happening in our nation, it can drive you down right down to just so be to be so troubled that you just break down and just say, God's got to step in and do something to help us because we're troubled. But don't look at it as being discouraged. You know, don't don't get perplexed. You can get perplexed, but don't get down about it. Think about why it's all happening and understand this. No matter what happens. The will of the Lord must be done. And remember this. Though the whole world goes to pieces, the Lord has given us the victory through Jesus Christ. Now tonight, people could be troubled about their very eternity and go beyond this earth and say, not only am I troubled about the present state of the world, but I'm troubled about my own state. I'm troubled about eternity i'll tell you tonight that's one thing that i'm not troubled about at all Amen. though troubles happen here on earth i know for sure that the moment i die or if the lord takes me out of here at the rapture that all my troubles will cease and tonight if you know jesus christ as your savior that should be the most comforting thing to you and you should find peace in that and tonight if you don't you don't know what true peace really is. And the world might think they have peace and they might be all celebratory and everything with the way the, the world's going. They might embrace it and say, this is the way I want to go with it. And I'm happy with the way things are heading. And, and, and we're, setting, we're setting a new standard and, and we're going in a, in a brand new direction. And people embrace these things, but no hope of eternal life. They know not God. They have no peace inside. Okay. Troubled here. Troubled in John chapter 12. Troubled. And look, the reason I, I went to Lazarus first where Jesus wept, because in the very next chapter, in chapter 12, this is getting close to his death. John chapter 12 and verse 27. Let's look at verse 23. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. 
If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul, what? Troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. You see, one chapter next, Jesus is troubled again. And it's not because of any death here. Now his hour is coming. He says it is come, and he's troubled. Now, I want you to know that Christ was not afraid to die. People may point and say, ah, he was afraid to die. He was not afraid to die. But think about what he was going to bear and the death he was going to have to die. You know, they, people have been persecuted and people have been afflicted and people have been tortured in unbelievable ways. Some, you, you can't even begin to even think about what people have gone through at the hands of others being tortured. You read in the book of Hebrews and it just talks about some, it says they were sawn asunder. Okay, the martyrs and how they killed these people. They cooked them over the fire. They took, they took uh, string and they pulled it so tight that it ripped through their flesh. They tied them to horses on one end and, and let the horses go and pull them apart. And how heinous were the deaths of these people that died for Christ. And you say, surely they suffered more than he did. No. One thing missing. They didn't bear the sins of the world. They did not bear that. And think about every sin that we've ever committed and what it's done to us. And think about how heavy and weighty your sins can be on you. And think about the load that you've borne and the things that you've done and the things deep down in your heart that nobody knows about but you and God. And how they grieved you and brought guilt to you. And you've gotten on your face and cried to God and said, Lord, Please forgive me for that. And you poured your heart out with everything you had. Think about the grief that you felt and the sorrow that you bore. And multiply that times every human being who's ever lived in six hours. That's what he bore. And that's what he knew he was going to bear. And that's why he said, my soul is troubled. Father, save me from this hour. But for this hour, but for this cause, came I unto this hour. He knew it. I came here. Now, after he died and he rose again from the dead, it was over. Right? He was victorious. So you think about what he bore, and he said, as his life was, our life would be. And as Christians, that's why tonight you might be very troubled. Okay? You say, well, when was the other time he was troubled? He was troubled in the next chapter. Three straight chapters. That's why when you get to John 14 and he says, let not your heart be troubled. He knows what you're going through. And he's trying to calm the disciples. That's the one thing that Jesus always had in mind. He always had others and was always taking care of them even when he, when he was in dire straits himself. He always had everybody else in mind. And isn't that the unselfishness of Christ? That Christ has us in mind all the time. Never himself. Never. Christ is never self-centered. One thing, how can people hate him? How can people talk bad about Jesus Christ? How can anybody talk bad about someone who was not selfish one moment ever? He never thought about him. It was always about us, always about everybody else. Doesn't that command our love? Doesn't that command our respect? Doesn't that command our service? Yet Christians tonight think it's about them. It's not about us. It's about giving back to Him. We love Him because He first loved us. John 13 and verse 21. 
when Jesus had thus said, well, let's look and see what he said. Verse 18, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was, here we go, what? Troubled in spirit and testified and said, verily, verily, I say unto you, I can, you can feel the troubling that one of you shall betray me. That was his innermost circle here. Those were his right-hand men, the ones he chose. And the 12, as he said to them, he said, my spirit is troubled, and I testify. One of you shall betray me. Troubled. Troubled because one of his own is going to turn him in. He's going to sell him in. 30 pieces of silver and indeed it happened and he went out and when Judas see John 14 doesn't happen until Judas leaves okay because it says in verse 30 verse 29 for some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him by those things that we have need of against the feast or that he should give something to the poor see Jesus said whoever dips in the sop with me he it is who would betray me so Judas dips in with him, and it was right there. Jesus says, that thou doest, do quickly. And no one at the table believed it could possibly be Judas. And then he goes out, and it says in verse 30, he then having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. He took off. So now they're down to Jesus and the 11. Now, when he goes out, Jesus then quotes says John 14, verse 1. Now remember, he's not there. It says in John 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Okay, now I'm going to read down through there for a second here. I'm just going to hold off because I want you to understand tonight. The reason Jesus was troubled and the reason that he can understand our troubles and that when we pray to him, we can say, Lord, you understand because you went through this. The reason he can bear what we are carrying and he understands it is because, remember I taught son of God? Jesus was son of God. Whose other son was he? He was son of Abraham. He was son of David, son of God. And fourth, he was his favorite title. He was son of man. He was not just God. He was man as well. Therefore, he could understand what men go through. So tonight, when I say to somebody or when I preach and I say, you need to accept Jesus as your Savior, he understands you because he was a man. But he can save you because he is God. You say, Pastor, that's crazy. He's mortal, and he's immortal. Amen. Yes, but this mortal here never sinned. And I know you always get a kick out of that. Amen. And when you grab a hold of that, can we go a day without sinning? Amen. You say, Pastor, I might be sinning in church. I don't even know. Have you ever prayed and been praying to God and thoughts come across your mind that were wicked? And you said, oh, God, I'm praying to you and I'm sinning while I'm praying. <laughs> or you're sitting in church getting a blessing out of the message and all of a sudden you think about that rotten neighbor that you have. <laughs> I wish their house would just fall in. I just wish something would happen, an accident or something. Would just. And the Lord says, what are you you're in church. 
One preacher said, even our repenting needs repented of. <laughs> hey, we should all get up and just shout and run around the room and say, ah, he receiveth sinful men. I, I tell you, if you don't know the Lord tonight as your Savior, please get in before it's eternally too late. Get in. Get in, as they say, while the getting's good. While you still have breath, you have hope. And Jesus Christ can save anybody at any time. Any time. Because, again, he's son of man and he's son of God. Okay, now let's take a look and see this son of man thing. Let's look in 1 Peter. Two passages. Go to 1 Peter and go to Hebrews. 1 Peter and Hebrews. 1 Peter. Hebrews chapter 2, it's towards the end of your Bible there. Hebrews 2 and 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay, let's look in 1 Peter chapter 2. And let's look in verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. I once got into a debate with somebody, and they said, yes, but Jesus was a sinner. And I said, no, he was son of God, he was son of man. He was a man, but he never committed sin. Oh, he was a sinner. I said, he was not a sinner. The Bible says, in him was no sin. If Jesus Christ was a sinner, then we're all damned. But he was not a sinner. And the blood that he shed was perfect, holy, absolutely sinless blood. And that blood is your ticket to get washed. That blood is your ticket for salvation through a sinless Savior. In him was no sin. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Go to Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. And let's look in verse number 14. He understands us because he lived as a man. Hebrews 2 verse 14. For as much then... As the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also him, himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Okay, now how powerful is the devil? I'll tell you tonight, if a person doesn't know Christ as their Savior, they are owned, lock, stock, and barrel. They are a servant to the devil. 100%. You say, oh, come on. If somebody doesn't accept Christ, what about all the Hindus? What about all the Buddhists? What about all the Muslims? What about all the people? What about the heathen? What about all the people of this world who don't accept Jesus? Either you accept Christ as your Savior and you get forgiven through his perfect blood because no one on this planet ever outside of Christ was sinless. No one. Christ is the only way. And that's not, that's not me saying it. I'll quote what Jesus said. So you can get it perfectly clear. And it's in John 14. The same chapter that he said, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus said, I am the way. Okay? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One way. One way through one Savior. And everybody else who doesn't accept Christ as their Savior is not in the family of God. They are controlled, operated, and owned by the devil. And again, that's not my opinion. I'll read the verse that tells you it, and it's the next verse. It says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And the bondage comes by the devil. Either tonight you're a child of God through Christ Jesus, or tonight you're not a child of God. 
cut and dry. When the Lord looks down from heaven and he sees the people that are saved, he sees the blood of his son. It's like tonight, you're sitting in church and the Lord looking down from heaven, just do the analogy, even though God is everywhere and he's in your hearts, but let the Lord looking down. And you know how you can see when like infrared and heat sensors, you know, when they show those through a scope and or binoculars and they got the heat sensors and you could see somebody walking and they're like all different colors. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The Lord looks down from heaven and he sees Pastor Kevin right now and he sees red and he sees me moving and he says, he's covered. The blood of my son covers him. And tonight, if you're in and you're saved, the blood of Christ covers you. Isn't that a good backdrop? Time to get saved, folks. Time to get saved. There's the fire trucks going down the street and the whistles and everybody's, the devil takes your mind off the sermon. I'm going to put your mind on the fire truck. Because you know what's absent in hell? There are none of those. There are none of those. The fire will never be quenched. There's never a fire truck, and there's not a drop of water. You heard the sirens. An emergency. I'll tell you what the emergency is. The emergency is if you're listening to this and you're not saved, you better run to Calvary. You better get saved. Because your soul is having an emergency. It needs a Savior. It needs a Savior, and it needs a Savior right now. Right now, he took upon him the nature. He took upon him the flesh. And he went to the cross as son of God and son of man. And he died understanding that we also would have our troubles. And that we could go to him when we were in trouble. I tell you, if you're in trouble tonight and you're troubled, go to Christ because he understands Go to him. Lord, I'm troubled. Call me. Help me. He was troubled three times. He turns around and he says, let not your heart be troubled. He was just telling them he was going to go away. He was telling them he was going to die. He was telling them one of you would betray me. Let not your heart be troubled. Go to John 14. Go to John 14. Again, John 14. John chapter 14. You know, John 8, 44, just to back up what I said about children of the devil. You know, the world doesn't like it when you say the world, the devil, the flesh, all that stuff. They don't, they don't like it when you put them in one lump. But Jesus did that very often. And Jesus said in John 8, 44, he said to the Pharisees, he said, ye are of your father. And they would say, well, Abraham's our father. We be not born for fornication. We have Abraham as our father. And he said to them, ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. That's why people commit all kinds of things. And can't, they can't escape the bondage of corruption and sin because it's got them. It's got them chained. And only Christ can undo the chain. Only Christ can do that. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house. Look what he comforts him with. And tonight, I want you to understand, if you're troubled, I'm going to try to comfort you with his very words. In my father's house are many mansions. And thank God, King James Bible doesn't say rooms. I'm not looking to go get a room. I don't want a room in heaven. You know, it wouldn't be funny... People believe the, the newer Bibles that say rooms. And the Lord said, well, that's what you believed. Here's your room. <laughs> that's what you believed. That's what you read. And you believe that, you get a room. All you who read the King James Bible, you get mansions. <laughs> Why would you want a cheap in heaven? You want a room or do you want a mansion? Huh? You want one a room? This is a room. A room? Or do you want a mansion? 
Oh, in my father's house are many mansions and they're not made out of wood and brick. They're made out of gold, gold. And you don't have to worry about a thief coming over and saying, where'd my mansion go? Somebody stole the whole thing. No thief, no rust, no water lines breaking, no backed up sore. Perfection, mansion. Oh, mansions, talk more about that. That's comforting. Can you feel the trouble just leaving you? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I like this. I go to prepare a place for you. Now, here's what's real comforting. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, how narrow-minded Jesus was. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, now, he also says, look at this. Let's go down to verse 15. Okay, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Okay, so if you're troubled, the Lord sent the perfect solution. He sent the comforter. Say, who is that? Who is it? The Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to go away, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will comfort you. I will send the comforter. The Holy Ghost came. When you accept Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, and he provides comfort. That's what gets you through. Christ is not here in body. I mean, it'd be nice if he was here. We could go to him and we could say, you know, talk to him face to face. But he left his spirit, the comforter. And he would comfort us through all that we would go through. Comfort. Comforter. Okay? Comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Ever wonder why the world just focuses on the flesh? It's all about the flesh. Everything from Hollywood down, it's all about the flesh. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh. They're getting surgeries to try to make the flesh better. They're working out to try to make the flesh stronger. They're flesh, 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 flesh. The Lord says, what's the most important part of you? It's not this body. The most important part of us is our spirit. Spirit. This is where people need to focus on. Forget the flesh. It's going to die. It's what is called worm food. You say, oh, that's not nice, Pastor. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes, right? Worm food. Did you sing the song tonight? For such a worm as I. You know the new hymnals change that? They don't like that. They don't like that. They change it. Oh, that's offensive. How dare you sing for such a worm as I. And we get all excited. <laughs> huh? You sang it tonight. She's up here playing. Over here playing, and he was on the flute, and we're singing for such a worm as I. And then, you know, we get, amen. Oh, my, how dare you? That's terrible. We got to change that. The writer of that song didn't mean that. Well, why did he put it in there? Has anybody ever seen the change? What's the, what do they say now? For sinners such as I. Oh, that's easier. That doesn't hurt quite as much. The world needs to understand the body is going to die and decay. 
The spirit goes on, the soul goes on. What's most important? The Lord said, spirit, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, they don't get it. When we praise God, they don't get it. When we're talking about Jesus Christ and we're happy in the spirit, they don't get that. They get happy at football games and base nothing wrong with those kind of things in sports and getting happy about things of the world, but that's all the world knows. They think you're crazy sitting in church tonight. They think you're crazy singing hymns. Who has the victory, them or us? Sometimes looking out the congregation... Is your heart happy? And let your face know it. You've got the victory. you got the joy. The joy of the Lord. That is our strength. Don't let the devil rob you of your joy. They can't get this. Look what he says. He says in verse number 27. Okay? Peace I leave with you. I'll wait till you get there. It's only down 10 verses. Okay, ready? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled and don't be afraid. Go to God. Go to the Lord. He understands. The Lord wrote this book. It's got to be fulfilled. The will of the Lord has to be done. Listen, Christ deep down knew he didn't really want to die, but he knew he had to. And we know that the course of this world has to go in line with the course of the Bible. And we know that it's going to get bad. But we also know that the scripture says, comfort one another with these words. And those words of comfort are, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be, amen, shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. Okay, now again, I've been talking through this, so I totally forgot this verse. Let's go back. So then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So the dead pop up, and all of a sudden the ones that are alive go out of here. Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's not how it ends. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Are you troubled tonight? After hearing this, you shouldn't be. Troubles go out the window. See how important church is? See how important preaching is? Because if you don't get this, you stay troubled. If you don't get preaching, you, you stay in that funk. The devil will get you down. And if he can keep you from church, he'll keep you down. When you come to church, you get freed from that burden, freed from those panic attacks, freed from the anxiety, forgiven for your sin. You get all that stuff in church. It's a shame the world can't understand this. And tonight, I hope you're saved. And tonight, I hope you, deep down, are not troubled about eternity and troubled about your very soul. Scripture says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Gain, 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 get, 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 build, 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 inherit, 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 buy, 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 buy. Thou fool! This night shall thy soul be required of thee. And all that you have is going to be somebody else's because you're going out of here. 
And if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, you're not going to the mansion. You're going to the abyss. Like that picture. No fire truck, no water, not one drop. Forever and ever and ever and ever. You say, Pastor, oh, that's tough to swallow. Then get saved. Aren't you happy you're saved? And aren't you happy you're not going there where the fire shall never be quenched? Where their worm, 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 again, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Jesus said that three times in that very passage. He repeated himself three times. Tonight, if you don't know the Lord is your Savior, pray with me. and Mean what you say. Pray with me mean it. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you want to be saved, please pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. I know you died for me and you shed your precious, perfect blood. Wash me clean. Save my soul. And please, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my personal Lord and my personal Savior. Give me this gift of eternal life. Save me from hell and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being merciful to me. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.